Hello, Del Ballou here. I was taking my walk yesterday morning and I was thinking about prayer and thinking about it particularly in regard to the resurrection, the crucifixion, and the fact that we can pray, that we can go to our Father in heaven and and speak to him as a father to us is that Jesus paved the way. Jesus, the Son of the living God, paved the way, opened the doors for us to be able to go into the throne room of God and to do so, as the word says, boldly. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about prayer. And prayer is a relatively simple thing. And yet, there are so there are as many ways to pray as there are people who pray. And so I want to talk a little bit about prayer. And there's a little acronym that pretty much covers all of the aspects of pray, praying. And that's ACTS, A-C-T-S. And it is very similar to what Jesus taught when his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us how to pray. And in Luke 11, we have what has come to be known as the Lord's Prayer. So let's just talk a little bit about the Lord's Prayer. And the first word in that acronym is ad ad adoration, adore. Now, why should we come to the throne of God first? By adoring him. Well, that's fairly easy. It's to acknowledge who he is and, and why we're coming to him, why we can come to him, the privilege of coming to him. And I think so many people have lost the awe in God, have, have lost the sense of God's um, almighty power. He is almighty God. He created everything that is created, that exists. He created it. And we, we need to first come to him and just acknowledge that we understand that uh, as much as we can understand it with our human mind. And when I go to God in adoration, I first say, my human understanding of your might and your power and your wonder is so far beyond my understanding. But I acknowledge that you are all that you say you are. And I just, I can't say how strongly and how, how important it is for us to acknowledge the might and power of God. God could, with the snap of his finger, eliminate all of us and everything everything in this world but yet the god who spun the universe into space set it on its axle put everything into order caused it to operate in a very fine-tuned manner i mean just think of all of the the tiniest details that god has taken care of before he even created man and how intricately involved we are with this earth that he created. I mean, he is almighty God. And even though he's almighty God and we are less than a speck in the whole universe, he loved us. He loves us. And more particularly, he sent his only son his only son to take our place to take the punishment for the sins of mankind which we're all born with for all have sinned and come short of the of the glory of God and that means me and it means you it means everyone we all needed a savior we needed someone to come and take our place 
And when you talk about adoring God, how much more should we understand how he loved us? And he's worthy. He is worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our love. He's worthy of our adoration. And so when we approach his throne, we don't do so with the kind of boldness that's arrogance or that says to God, okay, I'm here. Uh, let me see what you can do for me. He's already done the most anybody, anything could possibly ever do for you and it's eternal okay after we have come to the throne of God we adore God we acknowledge who he is then we confess our sins a sin is a, a big big issue and it can get very complicated but the simple matter is sin is separation from God. Things that we didn't even do, but we inherited from Adam had separated us from God. And now that our sins have been uh, paid for by Christ, we can come to him acknowledging and understanding that Jesus has already paid the price for our sins. But there are times, there are situations in which we do things that separate us temporarily from the love of God. Not that God turns his back, but that we, in our own sense of understanding what we've done, we put a barrier between us and between God. And so in the United Methodist Church, in our ritual, ritual we talk about um, forgiveness of our sins that we have so grievously committed against your divine majesty in thought, word, and deed. That means even the things that we think can put a barrier between us and between God between us and God and and we need to confess those sins and there are some that we know some that we don't know but it's important for us to keep the way clear and not to have our path scattered scattered with the debris of our sins and our our bad thoughts or even things that we do out of omission as well as commission and that doesn't mean that Jesus has to go back to the cross not at all so what we do is we ask God to forgive and according to 1st John 1 9 if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness so what we've done in prayer up to this point is we've cleared the way we have we have made our way to the throne and we've cleared the path of the debris the things that separate us from God and from our peace and there's much more that could be said about forgiveness but I'm going to just leave that matter for now so the third part of Acts is thanksgiving after we acknowledge who he is then we acknowledge who we are and how we need to ask forgiveness then we can come in gratitude we can come thankfully Paul said in everything give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you and I've heard a lot of sermons, as you have, that suggest we should thank God, not for everything, but in everything. And that's kind of a moot point. But the idea is for us to live with gratitude, with thanksgiving, and especially thanksgiving to him for what he's done for us and for things that he could have done to us that he didn't. And 
my list of thankfulness goes on forever and ever, and I'm sure yours does too. But living with a thankful heart always keeps us in the right tune before God. I know at times when I'm concerned about something and I find myself slipping into worry, I just stop myself and say, thank you, Lord. And that, that washes away a lot of worry, a lot of concerns, a lot of things that have been weighing me down. And so it is important to thank him for everything. And mealtime is a wonderful time to teach the family how to be thankful to God and ask God's blessings upon the food that we are about to receive. And I want, um, I want to go further um, on this thankful road to say that we should be doing this all day, every day as we see things that we are grateful for and as I said even things that tend to make us feel negative it's good to stop stop regret stop worry stop anxiety stop fear in its tracks and you do that by being thankful to the Lord now the last thing supplication that is the point at which we lay our request out before God, before the throne of grace. I don't know about you, but I have a fairly long list, but it's a precise list of friends and loved ones who need my prayers. And we are to pray for one another, the Bible says, James says, so that we may be healed. And that goes along with our thankful attitude, our thankful prayer, is that when we come to God, we, we don't have to keep saying the same prayer for the same person over and over again. This is where thankfulness and supplication intertwine. I say, thank you that my friend is healed. Thank you that you've heard my prayer for my friend for my children, for my siblings, for my co-workers, or whomever it, it might be. And it is important to do that because it says to God, I know that when I prayed, I believed. And Jesus said, if you believe when you pray, you shall have whatsoever you pray for what you believe for and so to continue to beg God as it were suggests that I didn't really believe that he heard me to start with and there are times when begging seems to be the best remedy for the anxiety that we're feeling but it is more of a prayer of unbelief than of belief but we have to acknowledge again what Jesus did to open the door for us and to believe that if we ask God for something, he's not going to give us something worse than we ask for. If I ask God to, to give me something, and, and as the Bible says, you know, if, if a son asks his father, for a fish, is he going to give him a stone? Or is he going to give him an empty shell? God is our Father, and He wants what's best for us. And so, when we ask, when we pray, when we believe, we need to set our imaginations so that we see ourselves in front of the throne of God with Jesus as our advocate standing beside us because we do come in the name of Jesus. So we pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. And, and if we come with that sense of being a part now of the family of God, 
that we're coming to the Father God and we know that He loves us, that He wants us to have the best. He's paid an awful price for us to have what we ask. And when we pray, we believe that we receive. And prayer doesn't get any more complicated than that. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. It sets a hierarchy of our relationship to God that begins with Him and ends with Him. And then the end of our prayer, Amen, means so let it be. We draw a line in the sand and we walk away believing that we receive. And I want to thank you for, for visiting, for listening. And if you'll please subscribe to my channel. And if you have questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you. And you can post those down below this video. And so for tonight, thank you. And amen.